Hey guys, Cameron here is Canadian Gamer. Welcome to another episode of Coffee and Conversation. Today's episode is brought to you by Tim Hortons. Now, as you can see, I'm outside, beautiful backyard here, enjoying the nice weather. It's too nice to be stuck inside a stuffy games room or rented condo or what have you will. But uh, today we're going to talk about open world burnout. I think it's an important conversation to talk about. Um, the reason being is because a lot of us are experiencing the lockdown right now, and with that, we're experiencing some boredom. Thank God for video games. Uh, some of you guys might be dipping into your back catalog of games as well. So what do I mean by open world burnout? Now, just give you a brief history, at least my experiences with open world games. Um, the very first open world game that I experienced, at least it was considered open world at the time, that had to be Mario 64. Um, up until that point, we were so used to the 2D landscape, um, you know, to see something busted wide open like that, fully polygonal 3D, it was, you know, blow your mind. And then shortly thereafter, we got the original Tomb Raider and a host of other open world games that came out shortly thereafter. But it wasn't until I experienced Fallout 3 back when I got my used arcade model Xbox 360 back in 2009, 2010. When I got Fallout 3, I had never, I, I didn't even know those games existed. And to walk out into that open world as the lone wanderer, uh, it was it was quite an experience to behold. Um, so much to do, um, so much area to just sort of, you know, even if you want to just avoid the missions and the storyline altogether, just walk out and do your own thing. It was It was quite overwhelming, but at the same time, Again, I had been so used to being somewhat restricted with the uh, rudimentary um, 2D games that we had played all these years. Um, you know, to sit down with Fallout 3, I must have poured hours and hours and hours into that game like you wouldn't believe. And then you could only imagine when I heard Fallout New Vegas was coming out, of course I was all over that like a fat kid on a bag of smarties <laughs> as they say and uh yeah the rest was history i know i picked up oblivion and i picked up skyrim as well uh gta 4 and then obviously later on we get gta 5 so lots of open world games to choose from um, i know uh, i purchased the original red dead redemption off of somebody when it came out he had purchased a brand new co-worker he didn't like it, so I bought it off of him. And that was another one I just poured so much time in the original Red Dead Redemption. Fast forward to today, um, playing the open world games. I don't know if it's just because maybe I'm an older gamer, I'm 37, but I find my attention spans wearing thin. I find I don't have it's not that I don't have the energy, but it's just like I don't have the patience to sit down anymore for hours on end and play these games. I Believe me, I enjoyed Red Dead Redemption 2. It took me six months to beat it. That was like a chore. And I was just going from mission to mission to mission, never mind exploring the open world. That, that was a grind. I had such a hard time playing that game. I enjoyed it. I just, man, I, I think I'm burned out on the open world experiences. And uh, I kind of yearn for those quick, easy pick-up-and-play games, kind of like the new Streets of Rage 4 that's coming out. Um, I know I tried to pick up Mass Effect, the original, after Red Dead Redemption 2, because I'd never played the Mass Effect games, and I picked up the trilogy recently, fairly cheap, at the local thrift store. Again, really impressed with the uh, aesthetics of the game. I thought the, gra the graphics in Mass Effect looked really good. But again, the open world, I just completely, completely burned out. I had to put the controller down and walk away. And uh, I think a lot of us in the community are feeling the same way. Um, a lot of the developers, you know, for the longest time over the last decade, have seen games like Fallout 3, Fallout New Vegas, Grand Theft Auto, as sort of like the blueprint for what's considered a cash cow. You know, everybody wants an open world experience, but you know, here we are, and I think a lot of us, I could be wrong, a lot of us are completely exhausted from these open world experiences, and it brings up a, a whole nother talk of, topic of conversation altogether. Well, if a developer comes out with a game that's not an open world game, 
and it's a very easy pick up and play experience that might last seven or eight hours. Does it make sense? Is it fair for that developer, that uh, that company, to charge full retail price for that game? I don't, I, I, I don't know. It's hard to say, right? But I don't know. Like I said, Red Dead Redemption Two, one of my most favorite games of all time. But do do I see myself jumping back into that game and playing it through again? <laughs> Not anytime soon. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I put in of all games, I put in Grand Theft Auto Five the other night. Here we are, it's 2020. Can you believe it? It's been seven years. I haven't played that game since it came out in 2013 when I beat it. It's been seven years it's been sitting on my shelf collecting dust. So I put it on, and right away I started to feel the, oh, here we go again, the open world, the open world uh, stranglehold on me. So I'm really feeling it, guys. I don't know if you guys are... Um, you know, so in a, in a way, yeah, it's kind of good that we have a lot of these, these indie developers out there that are making these uh, bite-sized experiences for the uh, for the gamers like me that need a break from the like I said the open world experience. But it's funny though if they came out with a, fo- a new Fallout game tomorrow, I'd probably be all over it. But I don't know. That's just my two cents on it. Are you guys burned out on open world games? Uh, let me know in the comments below. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching. Enjoy your coffee.